What I love to do is to look at life and soil that's microscopic. And I never would have believed that I look at that, but, but all of us in, in this lab are very fascinated with taking soil, just using it as almost like a kitchen sieve, getting the animals out of it that are microscopic, the ones you couldn't see in a glass of water even, putting them under a microscope, and then zeroing down and just seeing the amazing life in, in, uh, under a microscope. Well, I think it's just you're entering a whole new world. We talk about going to Mars, my God. We ought to be going, we ought to be focusing down. I mean, it's just an incredible diversity of life. And we don't know what they do, and we don't know where each species is. I love it. I, th I think Diana's work is, is the, uh, the archetype of, of local research, global impact. Uh, a lot of her work's been in the Antarctic. We learn these fundamental lessons and they have a global impact because they impact the thinking of scientists across the world. In the case of Diana, new ways of thinking of how to manage our soil ecosystems. How is it providing so many different positive things to us as humanity? It's pretty extreme. Uh, you know, it's coldest, driest, windiest place on earth. So that's remarkable that there's animals in the soil at all. And in fact, when I started working there, in 1989, they thought there were um, no, no species at all. They thought it was a barren valley of the dead. And now we can find species of nematodes in the soil. The fact that they can survive and how they survive is really interesting. So we've got experiments um, that we put out on the soil that stay there all year long, and they're greenhouses. And so we're warming the soil. We've been doing that since 1995. It's a long time. And we've seen that the population of the dominant nematode, the top dog nematode, is declining. The nematodes in um, media. The kinds of insights Diane has brought is, is informing scientists across the, the world and informing policy decisions across the world of how best to maintain our soils and make sure they're healthy and they're providing the kinds of services back to us that we expect of them. I think one of the important things we do in the university is to recognize our colleagues that, that do outstanding things. And nominating Diana for this award was just an extension of that. And we nominated her a couple of years ago for it. Uh, we felt that she really was exactly the kind of person that they're looking for. And so I put together a nomination letter again this year. We looked at the Tyler Award. It's an international award uh, given for, uh, I sort of think of it as a lifetime achievement award to someone who has contributed to increasing the scientific knowledge and the public awareness of environmental problems of our day. And Diana Wall was just an obvious to us and she was so deserving and so Dan and I put together the nomination. Uh, an extraordinary woman, she's one of the University Distinguished uh, Professors. She is one of the most creative scholars that I know of. One thing I really admire about Diana is that she really embodies the tripartite mission of the university, where you integrate your science, your teaching, and your outreach. She integrates that throughout her career. You can look at her body of literature, her body of work, and see that she truly embodies the, the CSU land-grant mission of research, teaching, and service. I think, it, you know, to me, number one is, was it good science? Have I been doing good science? I mean, you know, the, Having your colleagues appreciate it is really high on everybody's list. And I think the second thing is, once again, bringing attention that there is life in soil, that we're ignoring that biodiversity. 20 years ago, we didn't think about life in oceans. We didn't care about oceans. We were using them as a dump. And now we need to focus on soils if we want to continue to live. And that's the two things that, that I hope my work is bringing.